it's time for Big 12 College Volleyball as the TCU Horn Frogs get set to play host to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Good evening, everyone. Chuck Lomondola along with Katie Carter here courtside at Showmeyer Arena for game two of this two-game series between TCU and Texas Tech. Last night, Katie, it was really a dominating performance by the Horn Frogs. Definitely, and TCU is looking tonight to stay with the flow that they created last night and really just stay focused throughout the match. And then for Tech, you know, I really think it's just finding some sort of rhythm offensively and seeing if they can kind of get off to a quicker start tonight. If Tech is going to turn things around tonight, they're gonna to have to rely on their impact players as we take a look at Simone Overbeck. You know, and Overbeck. right, and Simone Overbeck, she's someone you probably wouldn't expect to, to think as an impact player because she didn't start, but she came in the match, she made the immediate impact and really turned around the offense for the Red Raiders, just had, you know, pretty good hitting numbers and um, really mixed it up and played smart. And, you know, I hope to see her actually start tonight. And, you know, going into the TC Horn Frogs, I think we can start calling Melanie Parra the lead frog. I don't know if we're getting to the leapfrog, leapfrog. <laughs> but hey, Melanie Parra, career best hitting 500 in last night's match. That is a very difficult thing to do, even for a player like her. She continues to be incredible, and she really is gelling with this Horn Frog team and kind of keeping them together. Let's take a look at the coaches for tonight. First for Texas Tech, Tony Greystone in his eighth year as the leader of the Red Raiders. Yeah, you know, and I can imagine Grayson, he's definitely had a lot of conversations between last night and tonight with his team. It looks like he's got a different lineup out there tonight. So definitely making some adjustments already just by having some different faces out there on the court. And for the Horned Frogs, Jason Williams in his second year as the leader of TCU, he's really turned the, this program around and they're heading on the upswing over the last couple of years. They definitely are, and I think something that, you know, starting last year in his first season with the Horn Frogs, you know, Coach Williams has just such a calm demeanor, and you can really see that reflect to his team on the court. They, they mean business, you know, they're calm, they're, they're enjoying a little bit. For me, it's just the perfect combination. Just about set for the opening serve as we take a look at Melanie Parra. Boy, what an addition to the program. She has been the transfer student from Texas. She has just been everything she's been advertised to be. You know, and she's the type of player that, that you can build the team around. So, you know, I, I bet, you know, the coaching staff for the Horn Frogs are definitely having a good time with that. You know, not only as an offensive threat, but defensive threat, serve, receive, you know, so she's such an all around player contributing to the squad. Emily Contreras will serve. To start the match. Buckley with a set to the outside for Jalen Gibson. Gibson again, and this time she's able to score. She goes right down the line. And wow, what a patient swing right there. You know, she did a great job just just kind of staying behind the ball there, staying patient, really getting a good look at where she wanted to put the ball. And and you know, we talk about we tell we talk about Melanie Parra a lot, but really Jalen Gibson, she's really such an asset as well to the Horn Frogs. Yeah, she's definitely an elite athlete. Had 12 kills last night for the Horn Frogs. Picks up the first one here this evening. Gibson again, and that one off the hand of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And you know, part of Gibson's job is, you know, she's an opposite right side attacker. So traditionally, I know in the professional word, world, and it looks like here for the Horn Frogs, they want to get every high ball to her, every kind of off swing to her, because her job is to, to terminate any ball that she gets. Hanson went for the tip, and eventually it's the Red Raiders who come up with the point here. Hanson last night had a pretty good game for the Red Raiders and, and picks up where she left off. Right, and you know, you can see there how she did a great job just, just staying patient, really setting up the block well and waiting most of all because the set for Par Parra was so far off the net, she was able to have good timing to get a good block. Hanson with the floater for the serve. They go right back to Gibson, and Jalen Gibson goes down the line. She scored the first three points of the match here tonight for the Horn Frogs. 
And another beautiful swing down the line by Jalen Gibson. You can see she has an opening there, so the Texas Raider, Texas Tech Red Raiders are not there. They're leaving the line open for her. She's utilizing that. Gibson with the serve for the TCU on the overpass. Melanie Parra picks up the, her first kill of the night. Parra had 17 kills to lead the way for the Horn Frogs last night. She also picked up four aces. There isn't a whole lot on the volleyball court she cannot do. I agree. Gibson again with the serve, and that ball is out long on that swing by Emily Merrick. And this was uh, a problem last night for Tech, a lot of unforced errors. Definitely, and you can see here, they're trying to get Merrick to hit out of the middle, so running more of a combination play to trick the Horn Frog, Frog blockers. That time she was under it. Under the net. Zone attack error on Texas Tech. Jalen Gibson and the Horn Frogs on a 3-0 scoring run here. Gibson again with a tough ball to handle. Tech able to come up with it. Bram Schreiber went to the bump set, but uh, on the overpass, the 50-50 balls won by the Red Raiders. And you know, that's exactly Reagan Engler's job is to just be ready for that overpass. She gets up actually after the TCU blocker and was able to win that joust. The freshman had a great vibe with the Colleyville Heritage High School. Para from way back around the 10 foot line, able to get it over. And there's a big swing on the left side by Emily Merrick. Well, check that. That was uh, not Merrick, it was Simone Overbeck. And that's right. I mean, we're not we're not used to seeing her because she didn't start last night, but she she started tonight. She's making a direct impact. She she's had some great aggressive swings up until now. Buckley sets the outside for Para. And Melanie Para able to sneak that one in the corner for the kill. That's her second. And now she'll step back to the service line. Mentioned earlier, she had four aces in last night's game. Dug out nicely by Tech, and there's Overbeck again from the outside. This time she goes cross court for the kill. And, you know, very impressive swing by Overbeck. You know, she really was showcasing that time her technique, you know, hitting a hit, nice sharp angle attack like that. Very beautiful swing. Overbeck will rotate back to the service line here. Bram Schreiber with the receive. Audrey Nalls just two kills away from a thousand. And there's Melanie Parra, but that one is long. On the back row attack, just sent that one a tick too far. Definitely, and you know, TCU, they're looking to Parra when she's in the back row. You can see that time she didn't have a block up. And sometimes when you're a little bit under the ball, not enough behind it, it's easy to hit it out like she just did. Nall. Goes to the off-speed shot. Tip by TCU. And that ball will fall in on the swing by Jalen Gibson. Tech had the block set up. They just didn't close it quick enough. Gibson able to deflect it off the hands. And you know, last night as well, the, the back row attack from Jalen Gibson, as well as the front row for that matter, was difficult to defend for Texas Tech. And it really is such a timing thing with that block, you know, making sure that they're really disciplined and waiting and just pressing low and over the net. Tough serve by Riley Weigel. Knowles. A set for the back row attack from Melanie Parra. This time she's able to keep it on the court. And it's kind of nice as an attacker once you make an error on, on the same attack and then recover that error like you see here from Melanie Parra. She really got a good swing on it that time when was able to use her entire body to keep the ball down. Blocked by Seymour. Sylvester with the last block. Good rally by both teams here. Parra. 
just utilizing her power. Even though they had the block set up, Tech couldn't get that ball back on the opposite side of the net. And you know, one reason why it's so difficult, not only because Melanie Parra is the one attacking the ball, but it's such a quick set to block. Tech with a point on that big swing in the middle by Reagan Engler. And you know, Engler does a great job here of just getting up quick and staying open to her setter so that she can feed her the ball. Really just a nice connection there between Engler and the setter. Engler led Colleyville Heritage last year to the 5A state championship. Nalls, the overpass tipped over. Buckley goes for the dump, but it's dug out nicely on the backside by Correa. And the point for Texas Tech. And Caitlin Dugan, you know, she's getting getting heated up here. She got a really good approach on that ball, and you can see that she just barely got it over the hands of blocker Riley Buckley. Dugan had six kills in last night's match. Para has to go to the tip as that set was a little bit in front of her. And a nice swing again by Dugan. This time she goes cross court for the kill. And a pretty impressive swing for that matter. She was didn't really have an approach. You know, she was off the net. And you know, you could tell that she wanted to just keep the ball in, but she did a great job of just using her technique to make such a nice sharp angle there. Tech with the serve. Buckley with the quick set in the middle. And it is Sarah Sylvester who comes up with a kill for TCU. And Sylvester, you know, she's she's always available, and that's what I love about her. She finds a way to get up. She finds a way to score a point, you know, that time. Not a big, heavy swing, but definite point. Most of the time when we call her name, it's on the block. She had Definitely. eight last night, but here she picks up the kill. Power just has to tip that one, and she was way off balance coming from the back row. Punched over. Nice rally. TCU able to keep that ball off the floor. Tech responding. Dugan with that swing. They go outside for Nalls. Back outside for Dugan. And Audrey Nalls with her 999th kill. <laughs> And you know, wow, Audrey finds a way to end that pretty crazy ping pong rally, if you want to call it that. And you know, she's really just doing her job, right? She's, she went up for a nice approach. She did a great job transitioning and getting off the net that time. Hard to do in a long rally once you get tired. Had a double double last night for the Horn Frogs. Gibson able to squeeze that one just inside the end line. And a good start to this match by Gibson. That's her fifth kill. And what's difficult about what Gibson is doing is with an inside set like that, she really has to work to get her feet around the ball because as a right side attacker, to turn that ball down the line, it's really difficult to do. Tip by Kate Hansen, the freshman out of Weatherford. And I, you know, I think Hansen does a great job here of just challenging the TCU defense. In this case, Cecily Bram Schreiber, you know, little itty bitty tip, definitely hard to get under for sure. Reese Rhodes with the serve. Set for Nalls. Nalls with her 1,000th kill of her career here at TCU. What an amazing swing at that for the thousand kill. That's just absolutely, you know, to have a record like that is so awesome. And, you know, I don't even think she knows that right now. <laughs> Focusing on playing the set. Point for Texas Tech. As rotating out is Caitlin Dugan. Emily Contreras, a freshman at Austin at the Lake Travis High School, will serve here. Gibson 
able to pull that one off the block, but a nice dig on the back side by Tech is getting down was Correa. Tech sets the lefty Merrick. They go right back to her, and that time she's able to get it through the block that was set up by Sarah Sylvester and Para on the left side. And, you know, not an easy thing to do like we just saw with Merrick is, you know, hitting, transitioning off the net, and then hitting again and scoring. So, and and for that matter, the, the block with TCU, they, they needed to wait a little bit longer, and that's what triggered that tool off Merrick. Melanie Parr comes right back with that swing for the Horn Frogs. That is her fifth kill of the match, ties with Jalen Gibson timeout on the floor. We're in the first set, TCU leading at 15-11. We'll be back with more of set one after this quick timeout. fans, the 2023 volleyball season is here and we're fired up to start the season off with a bang. You won't want to miss out as your Horn Frogs host big matches against Hawaii, Florida State, Kansas, BYU, Texas, and so many more. Come join the TCU volleyball team as they continue to blaze their own trail to greatness at Showmire Arena. Purchase season or single game tickets today by visiting gofrogs.com. Frog fans, with the thrilling action on the pitch and an electric atmosphere and blockbuster opponents, TCU soccer is the place to be. Tickets start as low as $5 and can be purchased at GoFrogs.com. Pick up yours now and experience the thrill of TCU soccer firsthand. Go Frogs! There are those who see the world through a different lens, who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid, but by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders. To think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time, to lead on. Audrey Nalls picking up her 1,000th kill moments ago, being honored here at Sholmai Arena as they put up the graphic for her. And then Audrey right back into attack mode here. You can see the look on her face. She kind of celebrated momentarily and then said, okay, give me the ball, I gotta serve. Definitely, yeah, back to business for sure for Audrey Nalls. And, you know, I think she, she is such a humble player, so. You know, I doubt that this is something that would, you know, I guess go to her head right away. And, um, you know, she's she's been a competitor for as long as she's played at TCU and has been such a dominant attacker. I talk a lot about just how hard she hits the ball and how you can hear it in the entire arena. It is Bram Schreiber who serves for the Horn Frogs. Bram Schreiber with the dig. Buckley sets the backside for Jalen Gibson. And she terminates that one. And really just such a beautiful connection between setter Riley Buckley and Jalen Gibson. So running that fast tempo set like Coach Jason Williams wants to see. And definitely you can see they're executing. And you can see Tech just not able to get that block over quick enough. In front of Gibson. Merrick has it stuffed. But it ends up on the TCU side of the net. So... Be a point for the Red Raiders. And there was a little bit of this uh, in last night's match. The TCU block took a while in the first set to figure out the timing against hitters like Emily Merrick. So, you know, Merrick doing a great job just powering through the TCU block. On the overpass. In the middle, that is Reagan Engler. Engler did a good job of recognizing this pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, you see a lot of players, they go up and swing on those balls. It's kind of cool to see when they just um, kind of redirect it like you, we so, just saw with Engler. Hanson with the serve. And it's Jalen Gibson once again 
with the kill for the Horn Frogs. Now, Jason Williams talked about her being, you know, an elite athlete. And you can see it in some of these swings. She gets way up in the air. Yeah, and you know, one good thing about her, too, is for, for her position as a right side, they usually don't help in serve-receive, but Jalen is able to serve-receive as well. So if they ever need to be bailed out and have her help, that's a good option that Jason Williams talked about as well. Malls with the dig for GCU. Para tries to go cross-court, but couldn't squeeze it in there. Side out, Texas Tech. Well, Para with a... An attack error there. Abby Dickinson will serve. Para comes right back with a big swing and picks up the kill. Well, you can just see she's so confident in her ability that even though she makes the the attack error a moment ago, comes right back and scores for TCU. She really is, you know, calm, cool, and collected. I mean. Recovering from an error like that, she knows exactly what she did wrong in the in the previous swing, and you know have the opportunity to recover that. That's kind of every hitter's dream when they make a mistake. From the service line, Tech able to bat that one over. Good job by the Red Raiders. Nalls goes to the off-speed shot. Gibson out of the back row. Another good rally by both teams here. Nalls. With the roll shot, dug out by Tech. They go to the outside for Overbeck. And TCU will pick up the point after the long rally. And you know something throughout that rally, the dig by Bram Schreiber behind Audrey Nalls was the most impressive part for me. And then the Audrey Nalls point down the line, there you go. Nalls now with three kills in the match. Bram Schreiber, the barrel, doing a great job of digging that ball out and keeping it alive for her teammates. Jason Williams gathering his team around. You know, TCU comes into this match 9-5 and five off the sweep last night. They're 4-0 and oh here at home. But when you look at the, the TCU schedule, it was so difficult at the start. They took on seventh ranked Minnesota and then Wisconsin and then they kind of had a down match against Coastal Carolina so three of the five losses that TCU suffered came in those first three matches they've been on a much different trajectory since then right and you know those first matches that were away as well so it's that that can be sort of an uneasy feeling you know kind of starting off the season with that but you know I I do know one thing Jason Williams is very good at scheduling <laughs> and he's not afraid to say that too he said hey if I'm good at anything I'm good at scheduling so those things are all for a reason you know playing some of the top teams in the country right off the bat that's definitely for a reason you can see now that it's it's really helped the team coming into this weekend TCU not ranked but I think it's a team that certainly deserves consideration to be in the top 20 or 25 uh, after this weekend's over if things continue the way it's going. Oh, definitely. I mean, especially with, you know, all the attention that these players have been getting on the squad. You know, Melanie Parra definitely is one of them. But, you know, also just the Big 12 and the, the teams that are the new additions in the conference and how it's kind of strengthened the conference as well. You know, the BYU addition definitely strength, strengthens it as well. So, you know, I, I definitely think it's, it's worse than both. Big 12 currently has five teams ranked in the top 20. Texas Tech entering tonight's action. Eight and seven off of the loss last night. One and two in the Big 12. Looking to turn things around. They have lost three straight to TCU. Lost both matches last year and lost again last night. So they're looking to Turn the tables on the Horn Frogs. Melanie Parra with a certain essential first of the night. That four, as we mentioned last night. And that's just such a tough serve to handle. Definitely. And you know, she has that hybrid serve, so it's a float toss, but a top spin swing. So she goes up with a two-handed toss and then she just rips on the ball. So it's a power power serve, but it does have the movement that would be in a float serve. Handled nicely that time by Texas Tech. Pancake dig that time by Bram Schreiber. 
Audrey Knowles with the swing. She's able to get that off the hands of the blocker. And a good job by Audrey Knowles. The only thing she could do right there was swing high. Definitely, and I was just gonna say that is intentional. So, you know, that's something that <clears throat> a lot of times hitters will work on in practice is when you're under the ball, you know you have a big block there. Aim for the sky and, and see if you can get a touch. Another ace by Melanie Park. Just incredible and such a difficult serve for that matter. And the reason why it's so difficult is because there's a lot of factors going into her serve. The height of the toss, if the toss is far enough in front of her, not too far, but far enough. So a lot of things like that. And then swinging on the ball quick enough. Well, at the start of the year, Jason Williams said she is an elite server. If she can continue to keep the ball on the court and not make mistakes, it is really tough for the opposition to handle. And there's Nalls. Now you talk about the sound of those swings sometimes from Audrey Nalls. That was one of them. Yeah, and you know, that's just, that's an addition to Audrey Nalls' realm of offensive tools. So having as much power as you can see there, you know, even a player that is in position to dig, it's just too much to handle. And that's just something that comes natural to Audrey Nalls. Another big serve. And a good job by Tech on the last two to be able to come up with it. And there's the back row attack from Parra. Well, we have seen a lot of that this year from Melanie Parra. And most of the time, it's unstoppable. Definitely. And, you know, it's hard to get to as a block, too. It's, a, it's still a quick set. It's back row, but it's quick enough that, that blockers, they just they don't have time to get there and make a solid block against her. Tony Greystone forced to take another timeout as TCU is on a 7-0 scoring run. They have set point coming up. You know, Tony Greystone, we mentioned he's been here at Tech for eight seasons, has a whole new assistant or staff uh, working for him, and they all have some sort of connection uh, to him. His associate head coach, Elisa Blair, grew up in Amarillo, used to come to Tech matches, and then was a, a ball person for him when he was at West Texas A&M. And then uh, both Tatum Rome and Emily Hill played for Greystone. So he's comfortable with this staff and they're still, you know, working through some things, trying to get things turned around in the right direction. You know, and one cool thing that's, that's implemented now too with the NCAA is, is they're allowed to have a third coach. So, you know, Texas Tech able able to add Emily Hill as a third assistant. So, you know, something new that's, that you might see across other programs as well. Um, you know, the, the more eyes you have on things, the better. So if you can do it, why not? Set point for the Horn Frogs here with Melanie Parra still at the service line. Got a couple of aces already after a four ace night last night. Parra goes to the off speed serve. Carrera dug it out. Carrera with the bump set. Buckley sets the outside. And TCU will win the first set as Lydia Seymour, the freshman, comes up with the kill for the Horn Frogs on the tip. Very smart serve by Melanie Parra. Very good defense by TCU and then finishing it, Lydia Seymour getting on the board, able to make the decision to tip the ball. TCU takes the first set, 25-14. We'll take a timeout, come back with the second set right after this. Hop on! <laughs> on Blu-ray and digital, add Elemental to your Disney and I've seen some passionate college football fans. Sling Blue 40! Sling Blue 40! Hop on! On Blu-ray and digital, add Elemental to your Disney and Pixar. You are expecting me. Buckle up. Hop on! On Blu-ray and digital, add Elemental to your Disney and Pixar. Come to daddy. <laughs> It's here. Action time. Yeah. At 
Jersey Mike's, they slice your sub right in front of you. All that meat and cheese just for me. Watching that takes me to my happy place. Oh, wait. Jersey Mike's is my happy place. Kelly, did I place an order here in my happy place? Not yet, Danny. Then I'm going back to reality. Number seven for Danny. Oh, thanks, reality, Kelly. Sliced right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. What do you get from the Morgan Stanley client experience? Listening more than talking. And a personalized plan to guide you through a changing world. Get a look at the John and Jane Justin Hall of Fame in the lobby here at Showmeyer Arena. The Block T Club welcomed the whole new class of Hall of Famers last night at a banquet. Matt Perk and Scott Atchison from the baseball team. Also uh, a number of others as well as we take a look at the first set numbers. So you know what stands out the most kills and hitting percentage. This is almost, you know, very similar to last night, except TCU's hitting percentage much better than last night, hitting 405. And Tech keeping above zero um, compared to last night, but, you know, hitting 190. Tech up two blocks to zero versus TCU. And then TCU with those two aces. So the, the lack to dig the balls by Tech and TCU to execute. As we take a look at some of the highlights from that first set, which is pretty much dominated again by TCU. And you know, one person to keep your eye on again going into this set, Jalen Gibson. So really dominant. She had zero hitting errors in the first set. So she, she really was on fire and able to move the brown, ball around as well. Jason Williams has to be happy with the way his team is performing here so far this weekend. You know, you talked about Tech last night struggling. They hit negative 054 in the first set, then just 33 in the second set before hitting 219 in that last set, which was the closest of the three sets in last night's match. So an improvement on that score from the Red Raiders here as they look to try and win a set from TCU. You know, they want, obviously they want to win the match, Katie, but it starts with winning a set. You can't win the match unless you yeah, get that under your belt. Exactly, and it's as a player, it's one thing to think about, you know, when you're in a situation like Tech is, you know, you have the loss last night, and then going in tonight is just one at a time, right? So not even one set at a time, just one point at a time, and it's it gets to be as basic as that. Um, you know, so I, those are all things that, you know, coaches you'll hear say to the, their players when they're in a situation where, hey, got to find a way right now. Audrey Knowles with a service error to start the second set. Now she came up short with that one. That is just the uh, first service error of the match by either side. Back to serve. Emily Contreras, a freshman out of Lake Travis High School in Austin on the overpass. That ball sits on the top of the net. And TC is going to be called for the net violation there. So if you take a look at Riley Buckley, she goes up to joust the ball and then she passes it again. And so that time they called a double attack because they're not thinking that the tech blocker touched the ball on the joust. And TCU comes up short on that set attempt. And Horn Frogs uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically making some mistakes here to start the second set. And you know, that, that's something they're going to have to do is just maybe they need to take it one point at a time as well. So it goes for the winning team and the team that's down. It's just keep your focus and, and stick with the basics. Jalen Gibson with that swing dug out nicely by Texas Tech. Buckley goes right back to Gibson and Gibson picks up her eighth kill of the match. Going cross court. You can see TCU trying to spread it around a little bit more. Well, and Gibson also just hitting different shots now. So the first set, she really liked to hit a lot of line when she could, and, and now utilizing the, the sharper angle attack. Successively, Bram Schreiber with the serve. 
Block set up nicely by TC, but a good job by Contreras to dig that one out. And Tech comes up with the kill. A nice swing on the outside that time. And Simone Overbeck, great job, you know, just finding the seam between the Horn Frog block. And, you know, that time the block was between Jalen Gibson and Lydia Seymour. And I, in my opinion, Seymour could have taken one more step just to close that block. But, you know, Overbeck, she found the, the seam. King Hansen with the service error. Hansen from up the road in Weatherford as a brother who plays football at Florida. A mother was a volleyball player. She played down in Stevensville for Tarleton State. Jalen Gibson with the serve. Correa with the dig. And the attack error that time. Side out. TCU with the point. So both teams right now looking to kind of clean it up a little bit. We've, we've had some missed sets and we've had some a few silly errors. So I think both teams regaining their focus as they go through this set. Trying to go down the line was Merrick, Emily Merrick, but that one wide. So an attack error on Emily Merrick. And I do like this swing by Merrick. It, even though it was wide, it was a heavy swing. It's, I think it's what she intentionally was going for. And you know, it's a good time in the set to kind of try things like that when it's such a low score. There's the block by TCU, kept alive and over by Tech. And again, great defensive work by the Red Raiders. Para with the kill. Reese Rhodes was right there, but just so much power behind that swing. And it was right at her. She really couldn't get a good, uh, her arms on it to control it. Jalen Gibson, after a 4-0 scoring run for the One Frogs, commits a service error. And, you know, TCU right now, they've got Setter in the front row, and then they've got Lydia Seymour, who, you know, had her first start of the season um, last night. And uh, so it's a little, you could say, a difficult rotation for the Horn Frogs, kind of with one hitter in Melanie Parr, which maybe she counts for three or four hitters. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, just something to think about Tech. They know who to key in on right now. They know it's going to go to Parra. A mistake on the outside that time by Overbeck. I don't know if she was trying to pass that or get it over the net from where she was standing, but she came up short. And Frogs, once again, without three green. She missed last night's match as well. Not available again tonight. On the overpass, dug out nicely. Knowles was in position for the putback, and that one a side out and a point for the Horn Frogs. Tech lobbying Tony Greystone for the challenge. They thought it might have been it. And, you know, I think she just overcorrected a little bit. It, it was definitely a close line swing. It was, uh, you know, a beautiful swing. She had no look down the line. She was looking one way and hit it the other way. Parra catches the tape and picks up another ace. And here's one thing about Melanie Parra. Well, another thing about Melanie Parra's serve. We've talked about many things. Um, but, you know, you have to expect the the velocity, right? So as a passer, you're expecting that. But if it clips the tape and it drops short, well, <laughs> it turns into a slower serve. So that's what we just saw. And you know, most serves that are, that are high velocity and hit the tape, that's what's gonna happen. Well, you can see the way Tech sets up when she serves. They had two players on the left close to the net, but everybody else was backed up. And so when it hit the tape, there's just nobody over here. Definitely. Graham Schreiber, Knowles goes down the line. And they are going to call a ball handling error against Audrey Knowles. I think she's asking what it was. I, the down ref is saying she touched the net. And she said, what was it, my hair? Um, you know, maybe she didn't feel, feel that it was a net touch. But in any case, she's still looking for a good setter connection. Hit her setter connection with Riley Buckley. Tim Harlow, the down ref with a quick whistle. Point four TCU. 
And so a good swing by Melanie Parr. The call was a net violation for Texas Tech for the point. But you know, another good swing, although it was out, <laughs> but the, the Raiders touched the net before it was out. So kind of a lucky break. Blocked by TCU, kept alive by Nalls. They go to Jalen Gibson, dug out nicely on the backside by Overbeck. Nalls able to power that one through the block. Tech looked like they had the block set up pretty well that time. Reagan Engler was there, got her hands on it, but just couldn't keep it airborne enough for any of her teammates to collect it. And you know, that's the type of offense that Jason Williams wants to run. That quick set from Riley Buckley, you see how far away she is from Audrey Nalls, but she's able to keep her in tempo for the point. And that time, TCU with the block, but it's a out on the opposite side. It looked like that ball might land on the court, but just a little bit wide on the block by Sarah Sylvester. Not a lot of blocks for the Horned Frogs tonight. In fact, none. I think after their 12 blocks last night, I think, you know, Coach Grayson had to talk about that possibly. Service ace for the Red Raiders. Maddie Correa, who did a really nice job last night at the service line. She was a real bright spot serving last night for the Red Raiders. And defensively as well. She's so impressive. You know, she's everywhere. <laughs> service error that time. Second service error by Texas Tech. She knew we were talking about her. <laughs> Got into her head. <laughs> Riley Buckley to serve. Floats it short. And there's the block. By TC Sylvester, along with Gibson, combining on the block. And Sylvester doing her job here, meeting Gibson to where Gibson sets the block and jumping straight up, keeping it simple. Set to the outside, and this time, an opening in the block for Caitlin Dugan, and she fires it right through there. And Caitlin Dugan, when she's able to get an in-tempo set, so a quicker set, you know, if, if there's a good pass made from a passer and the setter's able to kind of set from a perfect position, she really runs a fast ball. She has a heavy arm. She's a threat when she's in system. We go back to Dugan, who goes to the tip, and TCU's unable to get that one over. So a nice job by Caitlin Dugan who took a big swing a moment ago. In fact, took two in a row, had one blocked, and then was able to get one through. That time, goes with the tip. And picks up the point. Tech to within one here. Reese Rhodes with the serve. Set to the outside for Gibson. Merritt had it blocked. Gibson with the roll shot. And again, dug out nicely by Tech. Great job on the back line by Bram Schreiber. On the overpass, it is Tech who will come up with a point. Kate Hansen does a nice job at the net for Texas Tech. And, you know, just a great all around rally by Tech. The hitters are taking big swings. You know, TCU couldn't control the defense that time to keep on their side, but. I really got to hand it to Tech in that rally, just staying strong. Nice dig by Buckley. Graham Schreiber with the bump set for Nalls. Merrick, a lot of English on that kill attempt. Quick set in the middle, blocked by TCU, kept alive, and Bram Schreiber able to bat it over and finally finished off in the middle by Kate Hansen. And wow, what a heavy, heavy swing by Kate Hansen. I mean, that almost gave me chills. She just ricocheted off Bram Schreiber, hit the scoreboard. <laughs> what a great heavy swing, really great speed on the ball as well by Kate Hansen.
Tech takes a 13-12 lead here. Gibson had it partially blocked. Duke and TCU had the block up. Tech able to keep it alive, and that one's tooled off the block by Emily Merrick. The Tennessee transfer originally from Flower Mount. Our second kill of the match. I'm gonna check that third kill of the match. And Tech has opened up a two-point lead here. So Red Raiders coming all the way back, playing really well here in the second set. Melanie Parra unable to keep that one in the court. An attack error on Parra, a 5-0 run for Texas Tech. And they have it opened up a 15-12 lead here. Jason Williams taking time out. We'll take it with the teams. Back with more of the second set after this quick break. Frog fans, with the thrilling action on the pitch and electric atmosphere and blockbuster opponents, TCU soccer is the place to be. Tickets start as low as $5 and can be purchased at GoFrogs.com. Pick up yours now and experience the thrill of TCU soccer firsthand. Go Frogs! Frog fans, the 2023 volleyball season is here and we're fired up to start this season off with a bang. You won't want to miss out as your Horn Frogs host big matches against Hawaii, Florida State, Kansas, BYU, Texas, and so many more. Come join the TCU volleyball team as they continue to blaze their own trail to greatness at Showmeyer Arena. Purchase season or single game tickets today by visiting gofrogs.com. We started at 12. With an 11 deep and dropping down since 9 6. What happened when the Big 8 met the Southwest? Seven Heisman's. Count them. With six at the net, five on the floor, and four school stronger. We put up threes, throw up deuces, and make one thing clear we've always been greater than 12. Texas Tech using a 6-0 scoring run to take a 15-12 lead here in the second set. Tony Greystone has to be very happy with the way his team responded after losing the first set. Playing much better tonight. With Nalls for the Horn Frogs. And that ball just inside the line. Are they gonna say that the ball was tipped by Texas Tech before it went out. And from where we're sitting, I, you know, I, I saw the touch, the block at the net by Texas Tech. Um, I think Nalls hit it between the block and they got a touch on it. It was a heavy swing as well, so a um, little bit fast to see for the refs live. But you can see there, so you're, you're wanting to look at those blockers at the net, the Texas Tech blockers to see if it, that ball touches anywhere. And in this case... It looks like it might have hit the hands of the blocker that was on the inside there for Tech. Yeah, did, for, did, didn't get a number. I think it's Hanson. At first I was going to say Caitlin Dugan because she looked like she was the closest blocker to Audrey Nalls, but Audrey Nalls took a, a deep corner swing, so that would make sense that the, the middle blocker could be the, the one that got the touch on the ball. And they are checking to see whether or not this ball was touched. The call on the floor was that it was tipped by Texas Tech at the net. Tim Harlow, the referee on the floor, taking a look at it on the far side of the scorer's table. Remember, we have different looks than he has. He's able to zoom in on that iPad and call up a couple of different camera looks. So uh, we see the challenge rule here. Each team begins to match with two challenges. If a call is reversed, the challenge is retained. If the call is upheld, the challenge is lost. And in the fifth set, each team will receive an extra challenge, but not to exceed two. So Tony Greystone 
at the request of his players asking for the challenge here. And we talk about it all the time, Katie. You know, the players know, and uh, a lot of times they influence the coach as to whether to challenge or not. In this case, Tech kind of turned around and signaled that they didn't feel like they touched it. We'll get the call here from Tim Harlow in just a second as to whether or not this call will stand. And I think it goes both ways. I think the blockers and the hitters kind of know. And it is reversed. So the call's reversed. So the point will belong to Texas Tech. And Tony Greystone will retain that challenge. So Tech will serve here, leading at 16-12. It's their largest lead tonight. CC just looking a little out of sorts here in this second set. Buckley sets Para on the back row attack. And it's TCU point. That ball was touched. This time, no challenge coming from Texas Tech. And you know, a Melanie Parra pipe is definitely a threat. This time, she did, you know, the, the ball landed outside the court, but the blockers did touch it. On the overpass, Parra delivers the terminate. Termination terminates that one. I'll get it out. <laughs> you can see the smile on Melanie Parra's face. She doesn't miss those overpasses very often. And that ball just a little bit long on the serve, so a service error by Audrey Knowles. As she tried to float that one to the back row. And you know, I think Tech, they have they have been serving tougher, so TCU has found themselves a little bit more out of system in this set, not really getting as many money passes that they did in the first set. So unable to run their offense like they want to. Off-speed shot by Melanie Parra. Such a high volleyball IQ, she realized she didn't need to hammer that ball, just kind of rolled it over the net. And, you know, she definitely takes a look and sees where the defenders are not standing. And, you know, the last few swings for her have been a little bit long. And so, you know, she knows she probably keeps dibs on herself. Hey, I made an error. I got to recompensate for that. That ball was in the net. Well, TCU with the point will change the serve. Cecily Bram Schreiber will serve. Floats that one short. We go to the far side, it's blocked. Eric. Back to Parra. That ball is long. On the swing that time by Simone Overbeck and a timeout taken by Tony Greystone. And I think a really good look here by Overbeck. She's looking for that corner, which, you know, if it landed in, it definitely would have been a point. And, you know, with an offset like that, it's difficult to take a big swing on. So really smart choice by her. It just, you know, landed a little bit outside the court. TC with a 3-0 scoring run has not its second set up at 17. And the Frogs doing a little bit better job here. They have the serve right now, but they the last time Tech had the serve, they did a much better job on the, with the receive. I, you know, I agree. I think if, if the Horn Frogs can control their passing and, and put up settable balls, so it doesn't even have to be a perfect pass right on the net. It's almost safer to pass the ball a little bit off the net just so that setter Riley Buckley has an option, you know, to set more than just one player. Because when, when the pass is not great, she only really has one option. And then that way, you know, the, the opposing defenders, Texas Tech, they know where the ball's going to go. They can defend it easily, and, and there you go. TCU here in this set, hitting just 125. Tech actually hitting zero here in this set, but uh, 
right there with a chance to win it. 17 all, and now, as you've mentioned many times, Katie, these become critical points here as we get near 20. Yeah, you know, and I think it's gonna come down to, for both teams, the serve. So, service ace or error, and then if the, the ability to pass the serve. Ram Schreiber will serve out of the timeout. Tim Harlow talking to Jason Williams and now coming over to talk to Tony Greystone. I'm not sure what he has to say here, but he wanted to make sure that both coaches got the message. A lot of smiles, so whatever it was, it wasn't any big deal. Maybe just some housekeeping that they needed to chat about when it's 17 all. Well, Bram Schreiber is ready. And she'll pick up a service ace. Overbeck was there, just could not handle that ball. Had a lot of English on it. Graham Schreiber goes with that sort of floater that's really difficult sometimes to handle. Great swing that time by Emily Merrick. And she was able to really get on the ball there. I think that's their, you know, in system set to Emily Merrick. The quicker ball behind her and then being a lefty at that, it's just a different ball to, to take as a defender. You can see Riley Buckley took it in the shoulder there. Kate Hansen to serve. Quick dump by Buckley. Nice dig on the backside by Reese Rhodes to keep that one off the floor. Off the block and out of bounds, so it'll be a point for the Red Raiders. And you know, what a spectacular pancake defense by the Red Raiders. And you know, able to convert that ball is a great dig and you know, able to set the middle. Reagan Engler in this case, and just one against one situation. Hanson with the serve. Gibson with the kill, her ninth. She's been quiet here in the second set, started off the match with about the first three points for the Horn Frogs. And I think Riley Buckley just did a great job of just kind of laying it up there for Jalen Gibson to really you know, get inside and take a big swing on. And the Raiders had a hard time closing that block for sure. Pushed over by Overbeck. And there's the swing by Melanie Parra. She cut that one hard cross court for the kill. I mean, I think she's saving that for this point in the match. I don't know, but a high ball set, a double block, and hitting a hit like that, I mean, that's why we use the word supernatural and impressive and elite when we talk about Melanie Hart. Swing by Merrick. Out of bounds as it goes long. Timeout taken by Texas Tech as the Red Raiders find themselves down by a couple here late in the second set. And you can see Tony Greystone really kind of pleading with his team. And, you know, I, I really think it's, it's it's a back and forth game now of just big swings. So really great swings on both sides. You know, Emily Merrick, Melanie Parra, Jalen Gibson, you know, so it's a matter of, you know, kind of definitely no unforced errors, so missed serves or things like that. Um, but it's going to be a matter of the back and forth offense and whether, you know, the block can be up or either team can defend. Um, I think it can be a tight set, I must say. It can be a tight set. Melanie Parra with 13 kills here tonight. Nine digs, looking for another double-double. 300 points already for Melanie Parra this season. And we are just 15 matches, or 14 and a half matches into the year, and she's already got that many points. Well, yeah, it just goes to show her all-around contribution. So, you know, she's contributing not only in attacks, but blocks, aces, 
uh, you know, and things that you don't see on the stat sheet as much for a player, an outside hitter. So, you know, assist, you know, she's, she can set a high ball, um, you know, defense, you know, you don't score points digging balls, but you, you kind of do in my book or in, in, in the coach's book where a good defense leads to a good set and an opportunity to score. Gibson with the serve. Quick set in the middle. And Tech out of the timeout. Able to end the 3 0 scoring run for the Horn Frogs. Smart choice by the Red Raiders to set middle Reagan Engler. She's been very effective when she's gotten the ball. Abby Dickinson, the freshman out of Orlando, Florida, with the serve. Punched over by Gibson. It's going to have to be hit over by Knowles on the third hit. Red Raiders almost committing a mistake there, and there's Buckley in the middle. Wow, what a smart time to throw the setter dump over Riley Buckley, and she really actually shoved that one down. She kind of saw the confusion over on the other side of the net, used that opportunity, and she definitely noticed there was no blocker on her at that time. TCU with the serve, Melanie Parr up. With the ace. Another tough ball to handle. That is the fourth ace of the match for Parr. She had four last night, four again today. Boy, she's really got the serve dialed in here this weekend. Tech able to handle that one. Buckley, quick set in the middle. And TCU with the point. Lydia Seymour, the freshman from Justin. And you know, Lydia Seymour, she's so happy to be out there to get the ball. You know, she doesn't, I don't think she cares if she connects beautifully or not, but she's up and she's out there doing her job. She's really working hard, you know, filling, filling in for Bree Green this weekend. Set point for the Horn Frogs with power to serve. Clips the tape. Quick set in the middle of the block by TCU. Tech able to keep it off the floor. Buckley sets the outside for Audrey Knowles. Set belongs to the Horn Frogs as Knowles goes cross court for the kill. And the Frogs end it on a 5-0 scoring run. And that's the ball that Audrey Knowles wants. That's that in-system set that's pushed just enough to the antenna for her that she could really do whatever she wants with that ball. Well, TCU trailed in the middle of that second set, able to come back and win it. 25-20, we'll take a timeout, come back with set number three right after this. You are expecting me. Buckle up. Oh! I'm the daddy. You name it, it's here. Action time. Yeah. Subway refreshed their ingredients, their menu, and now they're slicing their meats fresh. That's why their new Subway Series subs are preferred by this champ. And this future champ. Pros who are talking heads prefer fresh sliced turkey. And pros who use their heads prefer fresh sliced ham. More deli meats are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Is this slice as good as your tennis slice? I can't answer that, but yes. Ford. You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places. On the grip of hammers raising homes, in toy boxes, and classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. 
Ford. We are all in on America. Welcome back. In- <laughs> Welcome back inside Schollmeyer Arena as TCU with a 4-0 scoring run to end the second set. They take a two sets to none lead. You get a look at some of the youngsters in attendance here tonight enjoying the match so far. Pretty good crowd on hand here at Schollmeyer Arena. We take a look at the second set stats. So again, you know, that we're taking a look at that hitting percentage by TCU. 250, you know, that's that's a very, you know, it's not good, it's not bad, it's an average hitting percentage. So TCU still taking care of business and still holding tech to just a 57 hitting percentage. And then those aces, I think they really came in uh, handy at the end of that, that second set for sure. And TCU with up two sets to none. As we take a look at the highlights from that second set, and really Melanie Parra once again coming up big at the service line, and then with a few of these swings. Right, and she really realized when she needs to kind of take something off of it, what's not working for her, so she changes it up, whether she's taking a swing or whether she's serving. So, seen a little bit of different, um, you know, speed from Melanie Parra in that last set, but it doesn't really take away from the impact that she has. Leads all scorers tonight with 13 kills. She also has nine digs, so probably a good opportunity for another double-double for Para. We'll have the third set coming up. We'll take a quick timeout and bring it to you right after this. Frog fans, with the thrilling action on the pitch and electric atmosphere and blockbuster opponents, TCU Soccer is the place to be. Tickets start as low as $5 and can be purchased at GoFrogs.com. Pick up yours now and experience. Frog fans, the 2023 volleyball season is here and we're fired up to start the season off with a bang. You won't want to miss out as your Horn Frogs host big matches against Hawaii, Florida State, Kansas, BYU, Texas, and so many more. Come join the TCU volleyball team as they continue to blaze their own trail to greatness at Showmeyer Arena. Purchase season or single game tickets today by visiting gofrogs.com. There are those who see the world through a different lens, who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders to think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time to lead on. Back inside Shulmai Arena, TCU leading it two sets to none over Texas Tech having to win the second set in comeback fashion. A good job by Tech in that second set. Caitlin Dugan with five kills. Simone Overbeck, we highlighted in the open four. Reagan Engler, a little bit more active in tonight's match, and she has four kills tonight. She's done a good job in the middle, and Aaron Lee Merrick right there, also with four kills. I think Texas Tech really just had more opportunity um, so far in this match, actually, just to kind of run their offense and, and get the middles involved. Um, they've been passing the serve better. They've been making a lot more digs compared to last night's match. Um, so kind of, you know, I can imagine able to play more their style of volleyball and the, what they plan on doing. Um, and then, you know, for the Horn Frogs right now, we're, we're going to see a different setter on the court. Right now, number 21, Lily Nicholson, the freshman. So she's going to get a chance to show us her stuff in this third set. And, um, you know, in my opinion, when she's come on the court, you know, whether it's just for a few points or, or whatnot, she's she's done a good job. You know, she's she's a she's a notable setter, in my opinion. I think that she really makes an impact when she gets on the court. Um, and I, I also think that 
the Horn Frog offense, they're still looking to find the perfect connection. So it's good to kind of mix up the setters here and there and, and make sure both setters have a lot of playing experience. She saw a lot of playing time up in Manhattan, Kansas against Kansas State at 23 assists in that match. That ball on the ground before Bram Schreiber could get to it. So point for Texas Tech on that swing by Reese Rhodes. And you know, a good just look at the defense right here. That's typically a really, you know, go-to spot to tip the ball. And it, definitely on the first point. Check that out with Merrick. On the overpass, Merrick again. Comes up with a kill for the Red Raiders. And I think, you know, obviously we're only two points in, but TCU, if they want to uh, have a chance running their offense, controlling the ball off the net, especially with a back row setter for them now. They don't want to pass it too tight so that she can get there and set the ball. And set the outside. And they are going to call TCU for a net violation. Bryn Williams, who started the match last night, seeing her first action here in the third set. She leads the team in kills and aces for the year. Backside set for Gibson. Nice job by Tech to get a hand on it. They go to the tip on the overpass, punched over by Sylvester. Williams with a big swing and a kill. As Williams comes into the match, makes her presence felt right away. And Jason Williams seeing his team fall down 4 nothing to start this third set, calls a quick timeout. And you know, the offense in general staying aggressive on the Red Raiders side. Timeout on the court, we'll take it with the teams. As TCU trails 4 nothing here in set number three. Frog fans, with the thrilling action on the pitch, an electric atmosphere and blockbuster opponents, TCU soccer is the place to be. Tickets start as low as $5 and can be purchased at GoFrogs.com. Pick up yours now and experience the thrill of TCU soccer firsthand. Go Frogs! Frog fans, the 2023 volleyball season is here and we're fired up to start the season off with a bang. You won't want to miss out as your Horn Frogs host big matches against Hawaii, Florida State, Kansas, BYU, Texas, and so many more. Come join the TCU volleyball team as they continue to blaze their own trail to greatness at Schollmeyer Arena. Purchase season or single game tickets today by visiting gofrogs.com. There are those who see the world through a different lens who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid, but by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders to think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time to lead on. Welcome back to Shoalmeyer Arena. 4-0 Tech with the lead here in the third set. As the Red Raiders off to a good start here in set number three, led by Brent Williams, the sophomore at Mansfield. Now she's come up with a couple of quick kills here in this set. Red Raiders to serve. Emily Contreras with the serve. Set to the outside for Melanie Parra, but that ball wide. So an attack error on Parra, and it's 5 nothing. Check. I think Parra, she's looking to kind of gel a little bit more, get in her rhythm. She's taking, you know, that's a really big swing. But just to get in a rhythm of some sort for the Horn Frogs. With the overpass and then another carry that time on TCU, so a little sloppy start here to this third set for the Horn Frogs who find themselves 
behind early. And, you know, it really is that aggressive serve from Contreras. It's putting them into trouble. They're not able to control the ball. Horn Frogs need to control that serve if they want to run their offense. Melanie Parra clipped the antenna, but or clipped the tape, perhaps. That one stayed on the floor. And you know, it's, there's a lot of things to think about when, when you see these types of errors. And you know, we, we do have a new setter on the court that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the, the problem, for lack of a better word. But just a different vibe, a different feel. Um, hitters, you know, we're in the third set. TCU's thinking about a sweep on the weekend. They're thinking about all sorts of things. So it reflects in the score right, score right now, 8-0. Those things are mentally, you know, holding back the Horn Frogs. An 8-0 scoring run for Texas Tech to start this set. And that will finally break the run. As TC scores a point, you can see Contreras with that hard serve just causing some difficulties. And TC had a system really on almost every ball she served there to start this third set. And I think if TCU can get on some sort of early run here, they will have a chance to get back in this set. But they got to do it early. They got to be able to get early. They want to be comfortable to finish out the set of the match. Side out. TCU with the point. Bram Schreiber back to serve again. Set to the backside for Merrick, and Merrick comes up with the kill. Emily Merrick leading the way for the Red Raiders now with seven kills tonight. And you know, it's a smart choice to, choice to get the ball to Emily Merrick when they can, especially in system. She's, she's really been unstoppable when she's in system and out of system. I mean, she's just had a great night so far. Hanson with a tough serve. Para. Cuts it cross court for the kill. You know, we talked about Tech struggles hitting early. It's TCU hitting in the negative numbers here in this set. Right, you know, plays like this for Melanie Parra, that's what's going to get him back in. But look at how difficult that is. A bump set from Bram Schreiber. She's running off the court and then having to hit a super high ball. You know, another impressive swing, but it's got to be enough to stay in the set. Point for TCU. That ball was on the wrong side of the antenna when it crossed the net. So an attack error that time on Brent Williams, the sophomore. Jalen Gibson. They go outside to Williams. Williams has it crawl all the way across the net. Right back to Williams. I even try that time by Lily Nicholson, just couldn't get to it. And Williams being fed quite a bit. We hadn't seen her till this set, but Tech really looking for her on the court right now. You know, and I, I think with this rotation for the, the Red Raiders, having Bryn Williams in the front row with a front row setter, you know, they want to utilize her. They don't really run too much back row. They have a DS in the back row right now for their other pin hitter. Nalls came up short on that back row attack. This is as good as Tech has looked all weekend. That's right, and you know, they're, they're there, they're doing their job, and um, you know, I think that time, I'm not sure if the block got a touch on that or not, but you know, TCU just, just needs to kind of, you know, do a little bit more than fine-tuning their skills right now. Freshman Lydia Seymour with the kill for the Horn Frogs. Seymour with three kills tonight. TC's got a couple of freshmen on the floor right now. Off-speed ball from Para. Tech able to get it over. Pushed over by Gibson. 50-50 ball won by Texas Tech. Nicholson with the set. 
Again, an overpass, and TCU unable to keep that ball off the floor. And you know, it's a it's a tough rally. There's kind of a, a missed set to start off that rally. Not sure who, who it was for in the back row, and then they were able to recover the ball, get the ball to Audrey Knowles. But what's happening is, is Texas Tech, they know where the ball's going to go, I think, because of the situation that TCU is in. They're not really passing great. They're not defending a lot of balls great. So it's going to the pin. Fred Williams with the service error. Sylvester rotates it. Taylor Rayola making her first appearance in the match for the Horned Frogs as she'll serve. Rayola serves down the line. That one off the block. Nalls just has to push it over. And TCU call for a fall. And you know, the, the referees, they're looking at that, that center line under the net to see if somebody's foot touches that. And it, you know, in that case, it was more than a foot by Audrey Nalls when she hit that ball. And you know that it could be a result of a few things. Tight set, hitters not uh, getting there quite well with their feet. Um, any one of those things can cause that. But you know, those are all things TCU cannot afford right now. Those are in the unforced errors category. TCU hitting negative 125 here in his set. Nicholson sets Para on the back row attack. Melanie Para with her 16th kill of the match. She's got a double double now. She's also got 12 digs. And it, it, it looks as though just looking at Para's face that she's trying to get in her rhythm. She's she's making do with with the situation she's in. So her team is down. She knows they're going to look to her to kind of recover the team. Nalls in the middle on the overpass, able to put it back. And that's a, a great serve by Lily Nicholson just to, to kind of lure that overpass. And definitely we need, TCU needs more of that. They want to get back. That ball long, service error on Nicholson. Merrill checks back into the, or Merrick rather, checks back into the game. On this rotation for Texas Tech. That set was a little bit behind. Jalen Gibson had to reach back behind her. Couldn't get over the top. And you know, there's something to be said about, you know, we talk about just elite players. We talk about Melanie Parr a lot and just some of these other big hitters out here of, of deciding when you can take big swings and not, you know. So when you're feeling good and you can take a big swing, we just see Audrey Nalls getting on the ball. That's a great sweat set, great swing. You know, she's feeling it. So by all means, swing away, especially if you're Audrey Nalls. But in other situations, if, if you're under the ball, if you see the score, it might be time to throw in a tip, throw in a roll shot. Nalls with the service ace. Sixth ace of the match for the Horn Frogs. They find themselves down by 10 points here. Really need to get on a bit of a run if they want to get back into this set. Nalls clips the tape. Quick set in the middle, they go to the tip. Nicholson sets the back row attack for Nalls. That one side out as Tech tried to cut that one cross court. Dugan looking for an opening on the other side. And a timeout taken on the floor here. Texas Tech taking a timeout. TCU on the 3-0 scoring run to get back to within four. You know, and I, I think the Horn Frogs that you can see Coach Williams having a conversation with Setter Lily Nicholson. You know, as a freshman, definitely hard to come in, and, and the coach is certainly going to give a lot of feedback about what, to, what kind of sets to run, you know, the quick sets for the middle, and just kind of in which situations maybe who to go to. It's quite obvious for the Horn Frogs who they're probably going to go to when they need to. But, um, you know, these this is a scenario, and 
15-11, Tech is up. So a, a situation that I think a setter that's not used to starting, Lily Nicholson coming into the match and kind of doing her thing with some advice from the coaches, but hopefully able to, to continue the winning the winning spirit, the, the win in general. So um, definitely a challenge for Lily, Lily Nicholson, a challenge for the Horn Frogs, but definitely not something that is a, a negative thing by any means. Let's take a look at the Big 12 standings. Heading into today's action. UCF sits atop the league, they're 3-0, followed by Texas, who won the national championship last year, Iowa State. And you see TCU sitting at 2-1 and one in the middle of the pack, Tech 1-2. and two. And then on the bottom, the 0-3 West Virginia Mountaineers in Oklahoma. So a lot more competition in the Big 12 this year with the addition of UCF and BYU. Two very good volleyball programs. Cincinnati in there as well. Point for Texas Tech out of the timeout. Hanson with the kill. Back to serve. Emily Contreras has done a good job at the service line. She's starting things off this set. Really gave the Horn Frogs fits. Dug out nicely by Rose. Nicholson sets par. Big swing. The Raiders have to bump it over. Quick set in the middle. Nice job on the back line by Contreras to keep that ball alive in Tech. With the point, Red Raiders playing much, much better here in this set. Red Raiders able to scoop up some balls from the Horn Frogs attackers, you know, having some nice rallies and, and then able to terminate and just kind of keep their cool and, and limit their hitting errors. On the overpass, it's Williams. He's really ignited a fire under this Tech offense. And again, that serve from Emily Contreras just really helping out the stats for hitter Bryn Williams, luring that overpass. Parra cannot get that ball over as she went for the tip and a timeout taken by Jason Williams. 4-0 scoring run by Tech, and they've opened up a 19-11 lead. You can see Jason Williams talking. He was freshman setter. Now, Lily Nicholson was the setter of the year as a junior in high school, according to the Dallas Morning News from McKinney, Texas, went to McKinney North High School. So, you know, she's got a lot of talent. It's just adjusting to the speed that Coach Williams wants to run this offense with. Right, and you know, for hitters too, just, just, you know, uh, you know, hitters are taught, you know, in, in my experience, one thing that always stuck with me as a hitter is better the ball. So no matter what the situation is, it's you're the one, you're the last person to touch the ball. So whether you got a perfect set, a set that's higher than you want, lower than you want, whatever it might be, it's always coming in with that intention to better the ball. So it's, for me, it's on attackers always. Uh, you know, I think that you're the last person to touch the ball. What are you going to do with it? What's, what's the score look like? What have you personally been doing? Did you make an error for your last attempt? Did you score? Uh, are you in a situation where you can take a big swing? Um, so those are all things that kind of stand out to me. And of course, the setter is definitely the quarterback of the team. But you know, I think TCU, they've got some big hitters. And I think those big hitters are more than capable to better the ball. You can see Melanie Parra that time. During that timeout, go over and put her arm around Lily Nicholson. Just say to her, hey, I'm in the back row over here. She pointed to the 10-foot line saying that's where she wants the ball to be set. Or like the five-foot line for <laughs> Melanie Parra. Tipped over. And again. Texas Tech with the kill that time was Emily Merrick. 
Now has nine kills. And that's just a great location uh, for most attacks to go. You want to you want to kind of attack where the setter is, so that if she does dig it, then she's out of the play. There's going to be a non-setter setting the ball. Contreras has been terrific at the service line. And she produces an error by TCU. A 5-0 scoring run for Tech, and they've opened up, or 6-0 scoring run, rather, and they've opened up a 21-11 lead. By far their biggest lead. Contreras tried to go down the line, this time missed side out. TCU, and that's a nervous error number four on Texas Tech. But Cecily Bramschreiber will serve. He finds himself way down here in this set. Williams had it partially blocked. Nicholson sets Parra, and it's Melanie Parra for the kill for the hunt run. And Parra, you know, just making a little wiggle with her shoulder, like, hey, she's, she might just be getting loose. It's, she's in the third set right now. I can imagine we're gonna see her getting a lot more sets moving forward, and, and you know, if Tech pulls this set out, going to a fourth, I can imagine He's going to be the one to look at. Eric tipped it over. Gibson dug it out. They go back to Merrick, who's had a good match. Fara off the block. They're going to say it was not touched. The side out, Texas Tech. And that time, Fara, she had. A, a nice double block up on her. They, you know, they had time to get into position, and she she wanted that angle swing. She just missed wide. Hanson with the serve for the Red Raiders. Mara. This. Uh, she tried to go straight down, and uh, ended up hitting it just wide. And maybe some frustration taken out on the ball in that last swing of just, you know, look at, looking at the score and as a hitter, hey, just going for it. There's the block by Williams. And it's set point for the Red Raiders. Williams has been terrific here in his set. Five kills and a block for her. All of it coming here in this set number three. Hanson with the serve. Farah with the point for the Horn Frogs. Her 18th kill. And you know, that's that's a great set for Para there. She's able to really hit the high point of the ball. The, the set had enough peak on it that you can see Para's fully extended there and she's hitting over the Red, the Red Raiders block. Jalen Gibson with the serve. There's Williams with the big swing. Quick set in the middle. Peck able to keep it alive. Mara on the outside again for the kill. And wow, I mean, Par is just giving a glimpse into, hey, this is this is what's coming, guys. If we don't pull out this set, I'm ready. I'm coming in for the fourth set. I'm warm. I'm ready to go. Quick set in the middle. Nicholson goes right back to Parra, and she wipes that one off the block. Great job by Melanie Parra. That's a little bit of a tight set. She was able to use the block in that scenario. So, you know, take a swing into those blockers' hands, the outside of their hands, so that it goes out. Total intentional there. Died out as Merrick tried to go down the line. Timeout taken by Tony Greystone as the Orange Frogs on a 4-0 scoring run. And they have fought off four straight set points. And you know, at this point, Coach Greystone is telling his team, hey, just, just play volleyball. Just bump set swing. Uh, you know, sometimes players get a little overzealous. They get excited and make some errors there, but hey, 
TCU, Melanie Parra, lighten it up. It, it may be too late, but it's a better time. What better time to start kind of getting some rhythm, getting some fire than now? In the last few times, I noticed seemed to be a little quicker sets by uh, Lily Nicholson. She's been, uh, you know, in the in this whole in this match for the whole third set here. Yeah, and you know, you, you've got to hand it to, to Nicholson. Just you're you're out for the first two sets. There's there's no way to actually feel in any sort of rhythm when you get on the court. And as a setter, you kind of need to you need to definitely feel like your hitters. You need to connect with them and kind of have a feel, a vibe out there. And it takes a little bit of time to kind of just get the jitters out and all that junk and just kind of feel good and, and then be yourself. So um, I'm really happy to see Nicholson out there on the court. I'm, I'm glad that, that she's been able to get in her rhythm. Jalen Gibson with the serve for TCU. Backside set for Merrick, there's the block. Lydia Seymour with the block for the Horn Frogs. Paro was there as well. And Parra, you know, great job setting the block there. Seymour, really nice swing block out to Parra to close. Williams had it blocked by TCU. Well, and regardless of what happens in this set, TCU is not going, going to go away easy. And, you know, it fires you up to block one against one. And not only that, but against such a big hitter like Bryn Williams, big swing. That was Nicholson, the setter for the Horned Frogs. And set number three will belong to Texas Tech as they finally are able to get the final point of the set. It breaks a 6-0 TCU run. We will take a timeout and we will come back with set number four right after this. Blu-ray and digital, add Elemental to your Disney and Pixar collection. Someday, this shop will be yours. I've been trying to fill my father's shoes. I never asked what I want to do. You have to do something with that town. Wow. The shop was never the dream. You were the dream. I told you you're special. Disney and Pixar's Elemental. Buy it now on digital. Own it on Blu-ray today. Subway refreshed their ingredients, their menu, and now they're slicing their meats fresh. That's why their new Subway series subs are preferred by this champ. And this future champ. Pros who are talking heads prefer fresh sliced turkey. And pros who use their heads prefer fresh sliced ham. More deli meats are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Is this slice as good as your tennis slice? I can't answer that, but yes. Ford. You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places. On the grip of hammers raising homes, in toy boxes, and classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. Ford, we are all in on America. Another good look at the before Texas Tech playing really well in that third set, defeating TCU 25-19. Melanie Parr leading the way with 20 kills for the Horn Frogs and 13 digs. But for Texas Tech, I think the spark in that third set really was Bryn Williams, who came in and really did a nice job on the attack for the Red Raiders. I agree. You know. She really capitalized on her opportunities. You know, she got, she got a lot of great sets and, and just uh, chances to kind of really get on the ball there. And, you know, you can see right there, the, the tables have turned with that hitting percentage, Texas Tech hitting 200, TCU zero. And, uh, you know, Texas Tech leading with one kill and everything else a little bit even. I haven't really seen a lot of blocks from either team um, this entire match. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a matter of TCU this set, just kind of getting in a rhythm um, offensively. And then if 
to see if Tech can just maintain what they've been doing. TC with 10 kills, they also have 10 errors, which is how they came up with that attack percentage of uh, zero in that third set. And I think most of those errors came um, really early on in that third set. I mean, with that, with the lead that Tech had, 8-0, and, and just, it was, you know, definitely good work by Tech, but a lot of unforced errors by the Horned Frogs and um, all sorts of things going on, net calls and, and miss serves and hitting errors and things like that. So, you know, I, I'm going to say it's a case of PCU thinking they had it in the bag and the weekend, everything in the bag and wanting to wanting to go home. And um, and Texas Tech said, uh-uh, we're here, we came to play, you got to honor us and respect us. And I'm happy they did, you know, because any good team, if, if you're a good team, if you're a good attacker, a good defender, whatever your position might be, you can handle any sort of level, diversity, you name it. Audrey Nalls with the serve for the Horned Frogs to start set number four. Jalen Gibson has been quiet really since that first set. Bram Schreiber sets Para off speed shot. Is that bump set was a little behind her, but she's still able to get it up and over. Just a really nice adjustment mentally by Melanie Para. I think she had some opportunities last set to kind of figure out if she's going to take big swings or not. And you can see there she fully takes a look at the defense before she goes for the roll shot. Service error by Audrey Nalls. Sixth service error of the night for the Horn Frogs. Emily Contreras, who had a great run at the service line to start the third set. Back there again, and a tough ball to handle. DC way out of system, and Nalls just has to bump it over. Merrick. Nice dig by Gibson. Nalls pushes it over. Williams. Nicholson does a good job of keeping that ball off the floor. Good rally. Gibson dug out by Rhodes. 50 50 ball. And Tech makes the mistake as Rhodes kind of tried to dump that ball and instead hit the net. You know, I like the idea. I think with long rallies like that, we've seen Riley Buckley do it a few times where they, they kind of take a look and, and they want to take advantage of their opportunity. You know, that time, she I think she just thought she was closer to the net than she actually was and bolted in that dump in the net. Graham Schreiber to serve. And it's an ace for Brad Schreiber. You know, Rhodes, the senior center out of Waco, went to Midway High School. Her father was a major league baseball player. But her uncle played 20 years in the big leagues, including winning a uh, championship with the Cardinals. So it comes from an athletic family. Impressive genes right there. And sister plays at Iowa State. Rhodes was also an outstanding soccer player in high school, so yeah, there's a lot of athleticism. Wow. Her family. Kate Hansen is served. Para just blast that ball right through the block. Looked like Merrick was set up for the block pretty well, but just too much velocity on this swing. And you know, it's a it's a difficult ball to take a swing on. It's an inside set that's really high, so you know the block is there, but man, she does a great job at getting her feet to the ball so that she can hit wherever she wants to. Block by TCU, kept alive. Bram Schreiber tried to bump set that to the outside, but that ball was wide, and Melanie Parr could not get to it. Hit the antenna as she tried to put a swing on it. Abby Dickinson, the freshman from Florida, serve. 
Bahar tried to just push that one down the line. Side out. Tech with the point. Tech has really played very well last set now to start this set. Yeah, you know, they're doing a good job of getting TCU in trouble. And you can see here, it starts with that pass from the serve. And, you know, Nicholson has no choice but to running bump set to Para. Williams with the kill. And just a spectacular show of athleticism by Williams. You can see how high she gets up. She's hitting, you know, over the block. She's so completely on top of the ball. Man, I, I would love to know her vertical in that in that swing right there. Another Impressive. One with athletic family, a brother plays football at Cal. And there's Melanie Parra for TCU with her 23rd kill of the match. And, you know, Parra, she's looking for rhythm here. And, you know, you can see running on the ground bumps that from Nicholson having to get the ball to Parra. It's, she's not in an easy situation right now, you know, not hitting a lot of in-system sets. And it's, it's hard for a hitter to get in a rhythm. And, and for Melanie Parra, her serve is like a swing, too. So, you know, I, I remember those days. If you're out of system, if you're not feeling good hitting, and then when you go back to serve, and with a serve like that, which is basically a... a Wing, it, it's it's kind of not really looking good for you all around. Friend Williams with the serve, and that's a side out. As she tried to cut, cut that cross court, just missed wide. That's the fifth service error on tech tonight. And, e you know, even though the score is tied up right now, I think just Horn Frogs, you know, they seem to me like they're more, they're down compared to, to Tech. You know, they're they're not really in a rhythm. There's some, um, not a lot of energy going on. And, and Tech is just playing their game. They're, they're staying consistent, chipping away. Tech to the outside for Nalls, and it goes over her head. Lily Nicholson trying to set that ball right at the pin. Ended up setting it over the top of Audrey Nalls. You know, and you can see uh, Coach Jason Williams just telling Nicholson fast, fast, you know, and, and that's the difference, the difference in speed when, you, when you've got a new setter out there. The hitters, they're, they're running one thing and expecting one thing, and um, definitely a lot, of, a lot of weight to carry for Lily Nicholson. Blocked by Texas Tech as they had the block set up nicely. That time it was a combination of Hanson along with Reese Rhodes. And you know, I'm, I'm on the conversation of setting quick and you, you can see Audrey Nalls there. She's, she was up and she was coming down when she was contacting the ball. So block is well established at that point and they're just waiting. Clara from the back row, nice dig. By TC to keep it alive. There's Nalls. And on the tip, Caitlin Dugan picks up the kill. And you know, just a, a smart choice by her. I think she saw the opportunity. She she knows, again, we talk about when a hitter knows the setter's in front of them, it has nothing to do with the setter. They just know, hey, setter could be the weakest blocker on the court, usually the shortest out of the bunch. Uh, so she really has utilized that. Nalls had it tipped the net. Audrey pushes it over. Go to the outside for Dugan, and she will score. DC unable to keep that one on the court. Back to back kills by Caitlin Dugan. She now has nine. And Dugan, you know, she's on a roll. They're, they're able to run Dugan in system here, so she's able to bring the power that, that she's expected to bring. 4-0 scoring run for Texas Tech. And a challenge here by TCU. They will challenge that. They feel that that is a net violation. 
No, Tim. Arlo will take a look at this one to see if Tech was in the net. He goes over to the scorer's table. We will take a look at it as well. And you know, again, when, you, when you're looking at a net call, you're, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 you're looking at Caitlin Dugan is what you're looking at. She's the one that contacted the ball, so no one else was near the net. Um, you know, my opinion is I, I didn't see her close enough to, to touch the net on that swing. Obviously, one of the TCU players must have felt like she contacted the net. Tim Harlow's done looking at it, so we'll get the call here in just a moment. The call on the floor was it was not a net violation, and that's going to stand. So a point for the Red Raiders. Point and a credit for the kill to Caitlin Dugan. <laughs> Tony Greystone has to really like what he has seen from his team over the last set and a half. Oh yeah, I mean, they completely have turned it around, you know, compared to last night. I I think from set one until now in set four, they've just progressively done done better and better and, and made changes where they need to make changes and, you know, doing something right over on that side of the court. It all really started from their ability to serve as Dugan picks up her third straight kill. The serve has really caused problems for TCU on the receiving end. They have not been able to cleanly receive a lot of these serves. And if they can't cleanly re receive it, means they've got to get the ball over somehow, which is, you know, easy for Tech to defend and then get the ball to Caitlin Dugan. Back row attack blocked by Tech. Audrey Nalls cleans it up for TCU. She's able to terminate that one at the net. And you know, 10 kills now. And I was going to say, you know, just a finesse swing by here. You know, this is all out of system. You see that the set is from Melanie Parr, a bump setting, and, and Nall's just kind of finding a way, getting a good hand on the on the ball and using the block. Nicholson with the serve for TCU. Dugan able to fire that one right through the block. TCU had three blockers up. And Dugan still able to get that one through. And, you know, I really think this matchup with Caitlin Dugan and Lily Nicholson, you know, excuse me, look, Nicholson is in the back row right now. But, you know, she's on fire, so give her the ball. And and I think if you're going to put three blockers up, definitely make sure that it's closed and not leaving too many seams. Eric with the tip, dug out by TCU, pushed over on the third hit. They go back to Dugan. Just at the net one by TCU on the dump. That one hit the floor before Brand Schreiber could get her hand underneath as Rhodes does a nice job. And another big scoring run for Tech. 6 1 scoring run for the Red Raiders. And they push the lead out to six. Balls clipped the tape, still found it. A way to get that one down on the floor. And you know, Nall's on the right side. I, I think she's perfectly capable on that side of the, the net to, to hit where she wants to hit. She's familiar with it. She's played right side before. There's the block by TC. They had a triple block up. Sylvester got it for Para was there along with Jalen Gibson. Yeah, really good help by Melanie Parra there. That made the difference, I think. Dugan was wanting to hit that direction, and Parra was able to get a hand on it. It only takes one hand sometimes. Service ace by Andre Nolz. Eighth ace of the match for the Horn Frogs, and for Andre Nolz, that was her first. Dugan just has to bang it over. Gibson able to keep that one inside the line. You know, I, I, I think Jalen Gibson, she wants to hit that line shot so bad. 
I, I don't even know how she was able to get her feet there in time to be able to turn the ball back. Uh, but she definitely saw the opening. She saw that the block was coming inside on her. So such a smart swing by Jalen Gibson. Rhodes sets the outside. Dugan with the big swing. Gibson goes cross court, picks up the kill, and the Frogs on a 4 0 run of their own. Uh, pull to within a point. A little bit better rhythm here for TCU over the last couple of points. Tech forced to take a timeout as TCU is on a 5 0 run. They close it to 13 to 12. We'll take a timeout with the teams. You are expecting me. Buckle up. I'm the daddy. You name it, it's here. Action time. Yeah. Subway refreshed their ingredients, their menu, and now they're slicing their meats fresh. That's why their new Subway Series subs are preferred by this champ. And this future champ. Pros who are talking heads prefer fresh sliced turkey. And pros who use their heads prefer fresh sliced ham. More deli meats are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Is this slice as good as your tennis slice? I can't answer that, but yes. Ford. You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places. On the grip of hammers raising homes, in toy boxes, and classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. Ford, we are all in on America. TCU with a 5-0 scoring run. They've pulled to within a point here as uh, Super Frog tries to fire up the crowd here at Showmire Arena. You know, and I, I think TCU's sitting in a, a really nice rotation. You can look at their front row right now with Melanie Parra, Sarah Sylvester, and Jalen Gibson. And then over on the, on the tech side, the similar scenario, three hitters in the front row. Got Caitlin Dugan, Emily Merrick, and Kate Hansen. I mean, two solid front lines for both teams right now. Dugan with 10 kills. Here tonight had six to lead the way for Tech last night. So much more involved in the offense here this evening. Balls at the service line. Backside set. Hanson just had to kind of push it over. Balls out of the back row. Sylvester somehow got her hand on it. And there's a miss hit in the middle by Kate Hanson. And Hanson was just trying to get that ball over, just kind of whiffed at it. You know, I, I think she, the idea is right. She's staying aggressive. You know, that's hit the ball a little higher and a little sooner. That could have been maybe a touch, but more power to her for trying. Dugan with a big swing. That ball out. But Dugan and company lobbying for the touch. And Tony Greystone's going to pick up the challenge card here and bring it over to Tim Harlow as they will challenge that. The ruling on the floor is that it was not touched by TCU. And he will ask for the challenge after talking to Tim Harlow. And I'm curious because, yeah, we, we know the challenge is a touch, but is it a touch by the block or by a by someone in the back row? I mean, my eyes were on the block, so um, 
this, just because of all the conversation right now, talking about a touch, there's something a little more to it, I think. Here are the plays that can be challenged. Ball contact with a player, whether the ball was in or out, whether it was a net fault by a player, whether there was a foot fault on the three meter attack line, back row attack, or a foot fault. The last one's kind of rare. We've never really seen one of those. This is the most common one. The touch at the net or the touch on the ball that ends up out of bounds. Definitely, and you know, a lot of players, they're they're looking for that touch intentionally. Attackers will, you know, we've seen a few times so far in this match. I think Audrey Nall's had one where, you know, she aimed for the stands and the ball went towards the stands, but there was a touch on it. So a lot of times the hitters are looking for that when they have no other option. We'll take a look at it here, see what we can see. Certainly no touch at the net. And hard to say whether Bram Schreiber touches that at the last second or whether the ball just skirted right by her. That is exactly what they're looking at. So no touch at the net. We can see that quite clearly. The question then becomes, did Bram Schreiber get a piece of that ball as she reached for it near the sideline? And, you know, I'm not so sure it's, from our view, it, it did look pretty close. So um, there's total possibility, and there you go. Touched by Bram Schreiber. So that call is reversed. So Tony Greystone maintains his challenge. That's the second one he's won here tonight. So Tech will be awarded the point. Jason Williams looking on after the call goes the opposite way. Now Tim Harlow and Tony Greystone. Taking a look. I think they're discussing how many challenges he has left. And he's saying he has two left, but TC should have none. Yeah. Tim Harlow talking to uh, the alternate referee, Chris. And uh, they just told Jason Williams he does not have any challenges remaining. So after the break in the action, Peck calls a 14-13 lead with the serve. Emily Contreras back to serve. And as we said when she was back there earlier in the set, she's been serving the ball very well and posing problems for TCU, although that one sails wide. And that was good recognition that time by Audrey Nall. She realized that that ball was going to be wide. Quickly pulled her hand back as she was thinking about going for it. And it's tough. Contreras, she has a really fast serve that, you know, it barely clears the tape. So it's, it's hard to, to react in time. And you know, it, that, that's the intention for sure, to get those players to touch it. Bram Schreiber with the serve for TCU. That ball long on the kill attempt. Back error on Kate Hansen. And, you know, you can see here, Hanson, she does a good job, you know, getting the spacing, but it looks like the set was a little bit off the net for her. She wasn't able to really get up on top of the ball. Rhodes sets. Merrick dug out by TCU. Frogs lots to get it over. Nicely done by Tech to keep that ball off the floor. Merrick again. That ball just punched over by TCU and on the floater. Bram Schreiber able to keep it alive. Para goes to the tip. Big swing from Williams. So Brett Williams, who was very quiet last night, has come on strong here in the second half of this match. And you know, she's she's a, a powerful attacker for Texas Tech. She really uses her athleticism and you know, get with those high ball attacks. If if you can muscle it through like she does, you're gonna be successful most of the time. 
Step to the outside for Parra, and she just wipes that one right off the block. But Melanie Parra has an opportunity to elevate, like she just did there a moment ago. It's tough to keep her from scoring a point one way or the other. Whether it's a clean kill or one like that that she just wipes off the block. Gibson with the serve. Back row attack for Audrey Knowles, but she sends it long. So back and forth, fourth set here. And you know, it's it's a tough set. You see Nicholson, she's running forward, setting a back set to Knowles. And you know, Knowles had a hard time staying behind that ball. I think if she was able to turn it a little more, she would have she would have kept it in a corner. Melanie Parr dug out nicely by Tech. Williams goes down the line, and Gibson can't get out of the way of it. And talk about an up and over swing. That's it right there. Number four, Bryn Williams, just showing that that expansive reach of hers, hitting over the TCU blockers. Parra goes to the tip and picks up the kill. 25 for her. And you can see Parra, she takes a look up at the scoreboard as she goes back to serve. So that's going to be her cue. Is she going to is she going to go for it or is she going to do her short float serve? Next to go with the power, but that one sails long. Well, service error for TCU. That's their eighth of the match. And this set's going to come down to the wire here. Tech with an 18-17 lead. TCU up two sets to one. Tech trying to send it to a fifth set. Simone Overbeck will serve. Nicholson goes to the dump. That's not exactly what you had in mind, but it works. I think my stomach just flipped over a few times. <laughs> it's a gutsy, gutsy play to make at this point in the set. And, you know, she uh, she barely got it. And, you know, just it, definitely no players expecting that. You know, a, a setter dump that, that rolls down the tape. Taylor Riola. Back to serve. Nice job by Tech of getting that ball over. There's the set to the outside for Knowles, and it's off the mark. Knowles just trying to punch it down the line to do something with it. And again, you know, TCU looking to, to take some good swings and find some connection and, and just, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, just better the ball. You know, think about the opportunity you have, and if it's an opportunity to take a big swing, uh, keep the ball in play. Uh, so really making the, the TCU bikers think about it. Parra with the big swing. The block that time set up by Tech. Dugan. And Tech. With that kill, Dugan now with 12. And, you know, I'm beginning to think Dugan loves those bump sets from the libero that are inside. I mean, she does such a great job with them hitting that impressive sideline and 10 foot line spot. On the overpass, TCU able to get it over, but again, make a mistake on the overpass again. Nicholson punches it over. Dugan on the tip, pancake dig by Gibson. And there's Dugan one more time. And it's 21-18. No tech. Last set, this set really playing well. Trying to send this one to five sets. Timeout taken by Jason Williams. And you know, Tech just staying tried and true to their their way of volleyball. I mean, they're sticking to their 
their system, their style of play. You know, we've seen them with their ups and downs, but you know, they've, they've ob obviously literally powered through with the help of Caitlin Dugan. And, you know, TCU on the other hand is, is trying to work through some, some diversity right now. They've got a new setter on the court and they're, they're, they're working on gelling. And, um, you know, I think this is a, a test for the TCU offense. You know, to see like how, how good are they? Are they going to be able to to power through this? Are they going to make some good decisions out there and and really focus in on other aspects? You know, keep that serve tough, defense as well, block. Um, so those are all things that I think can be tuned up a little bit better, um, especially when you've got you've got a new a new face on the court, a new setter. So hey, everyone else, pull your weight a little bit more and help her out. Two consecutive kills by. Caitlin Dugan, she's got 13 now to lead the Red Raiders. Emily Merrick with nine. Bren Williams, who just entered the match in set number three with eight kills. Melanie Parra with 25 leads all scores for the Horn Frogs. Jalen Gibson, 11, Hall's 11 as well. Right now, Williams is on the sideline during this rotation. But a 3-0 scoring run for Tech, and they've opened up a 21-18 lead. That's a critical point for TCU if they want to win this set and the match and not have to play a winner-take-all fifth set. Well, Correa will serve here. Jason Williams conversing with Tim Harlow before play resumes here. And now Harlow's going to go over and talk to Tony Greystone. Trying to get some things straight here as we head down the stretch in the fourth set. talk about the challenges I mean you know who has however many challenges left we know tech has two left and horn frogs have none Correa with the serve there's the set for Knowles who pushes it over Rhodes sets Dugan that ball scrapes the bottom of the scoreboard and it's a point for Texas Tech You know, in TCU, they're in a position right now, if this is the time, this is the point in the set that they need to turn it around, get the ball back, you know, find a way to quickly end the set. If not, you know, Tech is definitely on a roll right now. Backside. Set for Melanie Parra. A back row attack by Parra. And you can see there just by her position on the ball, she's able to turn it, she's able to do what she wants with it. So really good job staying behind the ball by Melanie Parra. Nicholson sends it long. That is a critical mistake by the freshman right there. A tough juncture of this set. And you know, it, it, the serving game, right? It's it's all it's all you. It's all uh, it's a mental thing, and and it's something. It comes down to being tough in that part of the game, being ready for anything. Football on Texas Tech as they were underneath the net and on the line. So there'll be a point for the Horn Frogs. And now Audrey Dawes will serve, and she needs to get on a bit of a run here. But the score, 23-20. As you can see right there, Rhodes was under the net. Dugan just tips it over. Bump set for Parra, goes to the tip. 
Pancake dig by Tech, and they get it over. And another attack error on Texas Tech, and a point for the Horn Frog. Really great effort by Tech. A fabulous tip by Melanie Parra to kind of draw that confusion by Tech. You can see here, she really reads the defense well. She knows that it's a tough dig for Rhodes, and, and they're not able to return it. In the middle, Hanson with the kill, and it's set point now for the Red Raiders. Looking to even it up with two sets apiece. And Hanson, she's been such a solid go-to when Tech needs her. You know, she's available. You can see there she wasn't able to really take a big swing on the ball, but she just simply taps it down, and that's all in the work of her approach, her, her hard work to get up and become available. Contreras will serve. Quick set for Gibson, and Jalen Gibson able to terminate that one cross court. TCU able to hold off set point. And, you know, I love this set by Nicholson to Gibson, you know, nice and, and fast and a little bit dropping inside so that Gibson could just go full angle on that. You know, there's no shame in just having everyone know where you're swinging as long as it's fast and hard. Set point number two for Tech. And that's an ace by Cecily Bramshriver. Bramshriver has been a solid server tonight. And, uh, you know, she's in a position, she, she's, she's a steady player, right? She, I think she's really mentally tough, and she's, I think, the Horn Frogs, the perfect person to have to on the service line right now. That point number three for Tech. Bram Schreiber with the bump set for Gibson. And that will do it as Tech will win the fourth set, and we will play a fifth set here tonight. Well, Texas Tech, once again, playing very well here in the fourth set, able to take set four, 25-23. We'll have a five, fifth, and final set right after this timeout. I've seen some passionate college football fans. Sling Blue 40, Sling Blue 40! But with Sling TV, some are taking their love to the next level. <laughs> Right on the numbers. No! I can still shoot up, right, Des? No. Yeah! Yeah! Let's not. With Sling, you can stream college football on ESPN for the best price. The college football you love. The live TV you love. Hey, can you pass the dip? At Jersey Mike's, they freshly grill your hot subs right in front of you. You can't get that smell anywhere else unless you have one of these. Don't mind me. Take the sizzle to go. Okay. Whoops. I'll pay for those. Here you go, Danny. Time to get these smells home. Grill right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. A sub above. Ah, that's good sizzle. Ford. You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places. On the grip of hammers raising homes, in toy boxes, and classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. Ford, we are all in on America. Welcome back to Show My Arena. You can see Bree Green, who's not available to play just basically telling her teammates, come on, let's go. We've got to win this fifth and final set as we take a look at the numbers from set number four. And, you know, it, it comes down to that hitting efficiency and the Horn Frogs, they've just been off. And, and that's plain and simple. You can see it here hitting 167 to Tech's 214. So both teams, you know, not hitting great. Tech hitting better than the Horn Frogs, but Nothing super spectacular. I think it's in range for the Horn Frogs. Um, and then the, those, I think the aces are what's keeping them in it, really. I think if they can stick it to, to the service line and, and just stay tough there, um, they're going to have a chance at this fifth set. Tech is solid, though. They're, they're not going anywhere. Let's take a look at the highlights from that play of fifth and deciding set. A reminder that this set is played to 15, not tw 25, just 15. So it, Things can happen in a hurry here. Teams will switch sides halfway through this set. 
but it's a winner take all set five here and it's you know like you mentioned chuck really important to get that early lead so to come out ready on you know focus there's no room for unforced errors or missed serves or things like that there's no time there's only 15 points so these fifth sets are are pretty pretty cutthroat if you ask me and it it depends a lot on how the team comes out. Lily Nicholson will stay in as the setter, so we don't know whether or not Riley Buckley has suffered an injury. We have not seen her since the second set. Cannot find her on the bench at the moment, but she's not played since the second set, so it's up to the freshman Lily Nicholson to try and win this for TCU here in the fifth set. And you know what, whatever words were spoken by Jason Williams, uh, we saw Bree Green talking to the team. So whatever words were spoken, you know, we'll, we'll see how the Horn Frogs respond, how they answer back um, in this fifth set. And, and if, if Tech can just keep doing what they're doing and um, they've been keeping the Horn Frogs kind of out of their game offensively and, and just having them make some unforced errors. Well, yeah, Emily Contreras will serve it. She's been really good at the service line. Able to hit it over. Williams. DC will just have to bump that one over. Williams again for the kill. <laughs> Williams now with nine kills since entering the game in the third set. And you know, it's one thing Williams hitting a high ball and scoring. What about in system here? You see her, she's, that's her bread and butter. So absolutely unstoppable. Nicholson sets par up on the outside. That one dug out nicely by Tech. Quick set in the middle and there's a kill. On the inside by fellow freshman Lydia Seymour. Great recognition by Seymour. I mean, she she understands that she's not in a situation where she can take a big swing. And, you know, she uses her size well. She's able to just sweep a small tip over the block there and, and get herself a point. Gibson with the serve for TCU. Dolls out of the back row. Red Raiders have played some really good defense here over the last two sets. Nice dig on the backside by Rose. Quick set in the middle. This time. The block really set up nicely here over the last couple of times by Texas Tech. But finally, Para able to get that ball through it. And, you know, that's something that the Horn Frogs are gonna have to do, they're gonna have to be able to play long rallies. And you see Para here, she's able to finish the rally, but you know, it's really great teamwork there, playing some great defense, throwing up some good balls to hit. Just inside the line, a service ace by Jalen Gibson. That is the ninth ace by, Gip, uh, by the Horn Frog. Oh, check that, 10 aces by TCU tonight. You said it a moment ago, the serving has really kept them in it. In the middle, it's Para on the overpass who puts it back down. And a timeout taken by Tech. PC on a 3-0 run here, forcing Tony Greystone to take the timeout. We'll take a timeout with the teams. PCU leading it 4-1 here in the fifth and final set.
Jason Williams talking things over with his team as the return to action here. TCU on a 4-0 run to take a 4-1 lead here. Gibson with the serve. Road sets the outside for Williams, dug out by Bram Schreiber. Para from distance, able to get it over. Right back to Williams, and that one's cooled off the block. Boy, they have done a good job of feeding that left side of the attack, whether it's been Williams out there or Dugan, that's where they've been going. Right, and you know, Horn Frogs, they knew that going into this match that they're a left side heavy team, and you know, it's two unstoppable pin hitters you can see now with Bryn Williams. She's just so efficient, whether it's in system or out of system. Barra from way out, and that ball just inside the line. I'm not sure how she kept that ball in play. Definitely an impressive swing by Melanie Parr. Different than what we were used to seeing, the bump set off of Nicholson, and just kind of having to use a little ab crunch torque to keep that ball in. It's Melanie Parr to serve, goes with the floater. Rhodes sets Williams, and Williams tries to cut that one cross court. But sends it wide, side out, TCU at the point. Greystone's looking for the challenge card. He's gonna pull it out here and challenge that one, saying it was tipped by TCU. So he will challenge the touch. It's interesting because Grayson's challenging a touch at the net and Williams was yelling at the ref about the setter netting which I, I think just ended with nothing because the, the call was that the ball's out. Let's so, take another look at it here. And you know, you want to take a look at those blockers' fingertips. I saw a middle finger wiggle. I, I, I'm not sure if everyone's seen the same thing that I'm seeing. So in this case, TCU middle blocker finger may have caught, caught that swing. I've been known to be wrong, so. <laughs> well, Tim Harlow over to look at this one as he is going to uh, take a look at the potential touch by TCU at the net. You can see he can expand that uh, view just a little bit, get a little bit better look at it. On the look we had it. Kind of tough to tell whether or not that ball was touched at the net. Certainly wasn't touched by Bram Schreiber near the line. The other call that was overturned by TCU late uh, earlier in this match was Bram Schreiber touching it before it went out of bounds. Take one more look at it here. So yeah, you want to take a look at Lydia Seymour's. Yeah, I think her middle finger on her left hand. I mean, you can see it there. It, it kind of goes goes back. So it's... And it does look like the ball might have changed direction or the spin on the ball changed just a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if this one is overturned. So far, Tony Greystone's two for two on his challenges. But this is a big one here. Yeah, and you know, it's he's down two to six. It's a perfect time to... Uh, to use the challenge and and you know he like we said it's a, a game to 15 so it's a really important point even though it's only two to six so it's gonna be three to five if he wins so a little bit closer and they will have the serve let's see the call here and they're gonna say that, that ball was touched by Seymour so Tony Greystone using his challenges effectively here tonight. Three for three on challenges for Greystone. Well, back to serve, Abby Dickinson. It's now a 5-3 TCU lead. Dickinson with the floater. Quick set in the middle, and Seymour able to keep that ball 
check that. They're going to say it was touched by the Red Raiders, and they're going to challenge it right away. Yeah, I was going to say that's a difficult ball for Seymour to keep in the court. Um, you know, from my view, it looked like it was either deep corner or out. So, yeah, out, but they, they called a touch, and here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> So they will review this call to see if it was touched. The call on the floor was that it was touched by a Texas Tech player at the net. We'll take a look at it here. Set for Seymour in the middle. So yeah, you're you're taking a look at number 17, Reagan Engler. Her you know her fingers this time. She's the, she's the one we're dissecting here with these replays and. Um, I was wrong last time, so I'm not going to give my opinion. <laughs> well, it didn't look like she was up there quick enough to get to the ball. Right, and you know it. Let's take a look here. I mean, maybe there's a better view. It's kind of a quick, a quick shot that we're looking at, so not really a whole lot of chance to see if, if there was a finger moving or, or something like that. We'll get the call very quickly here. And that point will again be reversed. So the call on the floor was that it was touched by Tech. It is not. Tony Grace on four for four. He's having a good night. The challenge guard, yeah. That's a big point. Now a one point TCU lead. Nalls pushes it down the line, and that one's inside the tape. Audrey Nalls, who's been quiet since early in this match now with 12 kills. Taylor Riola will serve. Rhodes sets the outside for Williams, who goes to the off-speed shot. Nalls has to bat it over from a long way away. Williams again, this time able to hit the hand for the blocker. And, you know, I have to say for Texas Tech, both pin hitters are really extraordinary at hitting these high balls. And you can see there, Bryn Williams, another great, great swing where she's able to just get up on top of the ball. And the block touches it, but you know, the deflection is, is unable to be defended. And um, I, you know, I think that's the name of the game for Texas Tech right now. If, they, if they're not able to run their offense, like be in system, run quick sets like they want, they're still able to execute with the high balls. Service error by Simone Overbeck. You know, Williams, we talked about her. She didn't enter the game until the third set. She's now second. On the team and scoring, she's got uh, 12 kills just behind Caitlin Dugan, who's now on the left side for Texas Tech as Nicholson serves. Rhodes sets Dugan, and Dugan comes up with a kill. And you talked about it, Tech is left side heavy. Oh, definitely. I mean, they're just so capable. And, and you know, here, they're in system. It's a little bit slower than TCU, but, you know, TCU has a hard time handling it. The, the block timing is different for them. Um, and if there's a seam in the block, man, those pin hitters, Caitlin Dugan is one of them. They just, they bring a lot of heat. The defense by Tech is they're able to keep it alive and get it over to the outside. That ball off the antenna. And again, that set was behind the TCU attacker, Jalen Gibson. You know, and, and it, it is a timing issue. So whether it's the hitters too early or, or the sets pushed too far, uh, you know, not what the hitter's expecting. Um, you know, it's something that they need to figure out. Back row attack by Para, but Raiders able to dig it out. Again, the back row attack, and again, a great dig on the back line by Texas Tech. And that time, Gibson's able to pick up the kill for TCU. Jalen Gibson now with 
13 kills. And just some great rallies we're seeing here. Gibson, you know, just going up big here. She's able to use the blocker's hand, you know, the inside hand, especially of the middle blocker, and, uh, and get a point for her team. Well, the teams will switch sides here as we're halfway through this fifth and final set. And, you know, we talked about getting that early lead. Well, here we are, you know, PCU is up by one, but it's, it, in my opinion, it's even right now. You know, it's, it's still a lot of volleyball to be played, even though the set's only 215. So name of the game for both teams are just, you know, keeping the serve tough. And we've seen a lot of out of system volleyball. We've seen a lot of high balls being set. So whichever team can defend, and execute those type of sets. Back to action here, and there's an attack error from the back row by Simone Overbeck. You now, as the team switch sides here, DC walked in front of me. I did not see Riley Buckley. Well, I hope it's nothing too serious. That means she's in the locker room or, you know, with the athletic trainers right now figuring out whatever happened. Para goes to the deep corner and finds just enough room for her 30th kill of the match. And I mean, with that Melanie Para kill, the entire arena just lifted up and got some energy going. And you can see the look on the Horn Frog players' faces. You know, that kill kind of just ignited some sort of fire. And I, you know, I think if Melanie Para can produce right now, you know, five points till the end of the match, end of the weekend. And um, I think that's what everybody is, is thinking right now on, on the TCU Horn Frog squad. Melanie Parra with 30 kills to go along with 14 digs, three blocks, and a couple of aces as well as she has just been, you know, off the charts here once again. The, Difficult to continue to talk about how good she has been for this TCU ball club as we take a look at the upcoming schedule for TCU. Well, after tonight, it will be Cincinnati who will be here next weekend, October 6th and 7th, to take on the Horn Frogs, one of the newer members of the Big 12 Conference. And then TCU will hit the road visiting Oklahoma and West Virginia on a two-game road trip the following week before hosting the Texas Longhorns, who won the national championship last year, and check in at number 10 right now. Melanie Parra with a career-high 34 kills back on September the 15th against Florida State right here at, at Schollmeyer Arena. Well, she definitely has an opportunity right now to surpass that. You know, she's she's in the front row. She just got to the front row, so she'll, we'll see her there for the rest of the set. Dug out by Bram Schreiber. Back row attack down the pipe, but blocked as uh, Audrey Knowles came down the middle. And again, you know, that one against one scenario with the pipe attack, it's, it's kind of, it all depends on the attacker and, and their footing, and you can see Audrey's a little bit off footing there, so it's hard to control where she's gonna hit the ball. That's a seventh block by Tech. And there's Melanie Parr once again for the Horn Frogs, and we've seen this from TCU when they need points. Why not go to your star? And I mean, the look of confidence in Melanie Parr's face after that swing, I mean, she is, telling everybody in the gym that ball is a kill, that ball is in. And I think that they're gonna challenge this again. Well, the challenge card got pulled out. Well, they're gonna challenge this, whether or not it was in or out. The call on the floor was that the ball was in. Tony Grace on four for four here in the match. So if, if anything, it, you know, it'd be, 
you know, obviously wide. We're not looking at if it's out lengthwise. We're looking at if it's too wide. It's definitely in the court. Um, so I think you want to look at that sideline, that red sideline, if we get another look at it and see if it's on the inside of that, which it is in favor of TCU. So Melanie Park killed down the line is good. Well, TCU with an 11-8 lead, and that's the first challenge that Tony Greystone has lost here this, tonight. Comes in a big spot. You can see Jason Williams during this uh, extended timeout. Once again, talking to his freshman setter, Lily Nicholson. Nicholson's done a better job here in this fifth set of running the offense a little quicker. You know, and I, I think she's been helped out a little bit. You know, the, the passing has been much better. So TCU, the serve receive players have been able to kind of give, make it a little bit easier for, for Nicholson. The service ace for the Horn Frogs. Cecily Bram Schreiber with her first ace of the match, and that is ace number 11 for TCU here tonight. Definitely a great job behind the service line for Cecily Bram Schreiber. She's gotten the Raiders in, in trouble a lot, if not, you know, with the aces. Balls with the dig for TCU. There's the set on the backside. That's blocked. Kept alive and over by TCU. Dugan once again for Texas Tech as Caitlin Dugan now has 16 kills in the match. And just a really great spot by Dugan here. She It wasn't really a powerful swing off speed, but you know, off the blocker's hand, so that's why those TCU defenders, they were lined up, I think, correctly, but had to kind of make that change in direction when the ball took a different turn. Contreras with the serve. Para will score another point for TCU. Too much behind that swing. Too much pace on the ball. Williams was there, just couldn't control it. And you know, just the slicing and dicing right now. I mean, she's really getting around that ball with her hand. Very impressive swing. Williams. Partially blocked, kept alive by TCU. Para again, and it's Melanie Para with her 33rd kill of the night, one away from her career high. And I mean, at this point, she's like, Do you want the beef or the chicken? I don't know. I'm going to give you anything good. <laughs> There's going to be something good that comes off of her hitting arm, especially this point in the match. Match point on the overpass is Para. And TCU wins it in five sets as Melanie Parra ties her career high with 34 kills. Such a spectacular performance by the, the team collectively, but especially Melanie Parra to finish the match, finish the set, finish the weekend. What a spectacular weekend for Melanie Parra and the Horn Frogs. TCU able to win it tonight in five sets as they take the fifth and final set by a final score of 15 to nine. So TCU takes both matches from the Red Raiders here this weekend. They run their season record to 10 and five on the year. They go to five and zero oh here at Cholmai Arena for Texas Tech. They are now eight and eight, one and three in the Big 12 as TCU wins it in five sets here tonight. For Katie Carter, this is Chuck Lamadola saying so long from Fort Worth, where the final tonight is TCU 3, Texas Tech 2. All games airing live on the ESPN app, our archive. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? That's it. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. 
Critics are calling the creator the best film of the year and the best sci-fi film in the past decade. It is a cinematic masterpiece. Joshua, take care of her. I promise. It's breathtaking in scale and vision. See this film on the biggest screen possible. Oh, seatbelt. The creator, rated PG-13, now playing only in theaters. At Jersey Mike's, they slice your sub right in front of you. Watching that always takes me to my happy place. Wait a minute. Jersey Mike's is my happy place. Slice right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. We don't know any first responders who only give 90%. Or farmers, the workers who build our towns, roads, infrastructure. They don't stop at halfway. And good luck finding a small business owner who's happy with an 80% effort. That's why they use Ford trucks. Ford F-Series, 100% assembled in America. Because we're all in on America. Yeah. 